Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Carol Amendola Dianca, board certified nutritionist, also called the Italian nutritionist because of my strong affiliation with my cultural heritage, which is, of course, Italian. Today I'm going to cover the five most often questions that I get from patients and from clients and from when I'm doing public speaking uh, about nutrition. And uh, I sort of did a, sur a survey over the last few years and I've been compiling the questions. So these are five of the top that I'd like to give you answers for because if they are five of the top globally or um, domestically, you may have the same questions. The first one I get often is, is sugar or fat the biggest culprit, culprit in our diet today. That's an interesting one. Is it sugar or is it fat? That really is the problem. Well, let's take a look at that. The average consumption of sugar per person in the United States, and that's an average across the United States today, is 170 pounds of sugar. Now, I know that's hard to believe, but uh, that is a, a pretty good statistic that comes from a number of good resources and um, it's an awful lot of sugar. If you think about uh, looking at a label, you'll see that there are usually four or five different ingredients that are sugars or sweeteners uh, that we are consuming a year. That's a lot of sugar. And so, yes, sugar is a culprit. That doesn't mean that we never, ever, ever eat even a grain of, of white refined sugar. That would be probably unreasonable for most people living in the United States, but 170 pounds is an awful lot. Um, and so too much sugar is definitely a culprit. And any sugar really is a food that does not offer us any nutritional value. What it does is it raises our blood glucose and then our body has to uh, build in insulin so that it can cope with the sugar. And then as far as fat, one thing I'll say about fat uh, to keep in mind is that we, of course, we need fat. There are fat soluble vitamins that we uh, consume and that we take and that are in our foods that need fat uh, in order to metabolize them. But all fat is not considered equal. Um, there is monounsaturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, saturated fat, and then there's trans fat, which is really a terrible thing that we should never be consuming that comes from hydrogenated fats. So what uh, we would like in the diet optimally is monounsaturated fat and polyunsaturated fat. And without going into a lot of detail about that, I will just say that those are fats that come mainly from plants, from avocados, from uh, good high polyphenol olive oil. Uh, olive oil does have some saturated fat, but it's mostly unsaturated. So uh, too much saturated fat, yes, is a culprit in our diet today. It's been linked to a number of things, including of course, heart disease. Another question that I get often is, how much water do I need? How much water should I be drinking a day? And we've probably all heard that we need eight glasses of water a day. That comes from a rather old statistic, I think from the 40s, that was handed out that we should be drinking eight glasses of water a day. Our real um, indication of whether we need water or not is if we're thirsty. And as you may have heard, if you're already thirsty, that means you're dehydrated, that you need water. So there's water in uh, foods, there's water in fruits, there's uh, water in a lot of the foods that we eat. And so we do get water other than drinking glasses of water. But, um, you know, seven or eight glasses of water is a is a ballpark figure. Uh, the estimate really depends also on how much we perspire, what our lifestyle is like, if we live in a hot climate, a warm climate, a cold climate. All of these affect our needs for water, so we need to do some self-gauging about water. A third question is, uh, is food labeled, is food that is labeled organic better for you? Um, absolutely, it's most likely better, better for the environment because it hasn't been sprayed with pesticides. But uh, as much of the research shows that I have read, there can be the same nutritional value in organic food 
versus conventionally raised food because it's both coming from the soil and bringing up the minerals from the soil, building the antioxidants within the plant. Many times we're, we're buying organic food that isn't labeled organic because it's very expensive for a farmer to get certified as an organic farmer. So when you go to a farm stand or a, a garden uh, uh, sale of food, ask if it's you know sprayed or let them see if there's a label there that says organic and that will tell you or a sign that says organically grown of course that the benefit to that is that you're not getting the pesticides and the sprays in your foods that's a huge benefit especially when it comes to eating fruits like berries that are hard to uh, hard to wash and clean those pesticides off. So there are many, many benefits. But as far as the research that I've read that, that analyzes organic food versus con conventionally grown food, the um, nutritional value remains pretty close. Um, and then um, should here's another one that I always enjoy getting. Should I avoid fruit because there's sugar in fruit? Well, we need fruit. We need, you know, two servings a day of fruit. We need at least two cups of fruit a day that we should be eating. However, if we're packing fruit into smoothies and they don't, and there's no fiber left to uh, slow down the metabolism of the natural sugars in the fruit, we could be overdoing it with natural sugars. However, if we're eating fruits that have fiber in them, such as blueberries and strawberries and blackberries, um, these foods, these fruits have uh, enough fiber where it's going to slow down the amount of sugar in the fruit and in our bloodstream. And then lastly, are fresh vegetables as good as frozen vegetables? So fresh vegetables and frozen vegetables can be surprisingly very close to each other in nutritional value. Uh, fresh vegetables, of course, need to be uh, picked fresh and brought home and prepared while they're still very fresh. A lot of times with um, the frozen vegetables, they're picked fresh. They're picked at their peak of freshness. They are freeze dried and so they become uh, freeze dried immediately and they get frozen and they have the same nutritional value. So fresh and frozen can be the same. Sometimes frozen fruits and vegetables can have even more nutritional value because they are frozen right at their peak of freshness. So those are just some of the tips, some of the five most often questions that I get asked when I do uh, talks. I will continue to send more information out on this YouTube channel. Please subscribe if you will. I think there's a subscribe button either on my uh, video here or below, and I will be adding more information as we go. Thank you so much for visiting today.